My name is Fern Abrams. I'm the Director of Government Relations and Environmental Policy, and I have the question of the week. What's the big deal with halogen free? Before we get into this, we need a basic vocabulary lesson, because halogen free is actually neither. International standards for laminate used in electronics define halogen free as a maximum of 900 ppm chlorine, a maximum of 900 ppm bromine, and a combined total of chlorine and bromine not to exceed 1500 ppm. Of course, when you hear the term free, you might assume that would be 0 ppm, not 900 ppm, and certainly not 1500 ppm. The second little problem with the term halogen free is that there's no mention of the other three halogens, fluorine, iodine, and acetine. Nonetheless, this definition is being applied as halogen free becomes the latest green electronics trend to sweep the globe. Well, what's behind this trend? There are two what I would call red herrings. The first one has to do with halogenated flame retardants. Specific halogenated flame retardants have been proven to be carcinogenic or otherwise toxic to human health and the environment. These flame retardants are no longer used in electronics, and in fact, many of them have been taken off the global marketplace altogether. So that should be the end of that, right? Wrong. The precautionary principle, described to by the EU and certain NGO groups, says throw out the baby with the bathwater and assume that all halogenated flame retardants are bad for the environment or human health simply because a few members of this chemical class have been shown to be hazardous. The fact is, recent and extensive thorough risk assessments conducted by the European Union found that tetrabromyl bisphenol A, or TBBPA, the most common flame retardant in printed boards, does not pose a danger to human health or the environment when used in printed circuit boards. The second issue, or red herring as I would say, is the, open, the prevalence of open burning of waste electronics in developing nations. During this open burning, dioxins, a very hazardous chemical, can be formed because waste materials are burned in the presence of halogens. This applies not just to halogens and flame retardants and polyvinyl chloride, another substance used in electronics and targeted by non-governmental environmental groups, but to any sources of halogen in the electronic products, including halogens in solder flux, laminate, plastics, and other electronic materials. In fact, the halogens don't even have to be in the electronics. You could stick a shaker of salt or an air and half package of McDonald's french fries in an open burning of electronics, and that would lead to the formation of dioxin. The fact is, open burning is never good for the environment. Open burning of electronics and other sub materials, substances, waste, whatever, leads to the formation of a number of hazardous compounds, including dioxins. So really, it would be far more efficient to ban open burning altogether than to try to eliminate the formation of dioxins by eliminating halogens from electronic materials. Nonetheless, the industry is being encouraged to address this problem by removing halogens from all electronics. IBC believes that halogen-free is therefore not a scientific term or an environmental term, but a marketing term. We believe that all regulations should be based on science, and we strongly oppose the regulation or deselection of TBBPA and other sources of halogen simply because we want to toss out the baby with the bathwater. Nonetheless, you might ask, why are we writing a halogen or low halogen or halogen free guideline if we think this is just marketing? Well, we know that our OEM members are exposed to global pressure from non-governmental groups who are pushing halogen free, and this affects their customers. So we know that the electronic supply chain will continue to be asked to supply low halogen or so-called halogen free electronics. This is where industry-developed guidelines and standards come in. We know that it's easier and less expensive for the supply chain to manufacture to a common low halogen guideline rather than try to meet differing low halogen requirements from each of their customers. Therefore, we have a draft guideline which does not comment on the environmental benefits or lack thereof of low halogen electronics. It simply seeks to lay out a common definition for the electronics industry kind of like the difference between chocolate ice cream and vanilla ice cream. That's all for today. Send your questions to answers at ipc.org, and thanks for joining me.